I'm actually a bit shocked right now at what I've just seen. So normally I'd polish up some intro, get it all snappy and ready to go, but I've just got a jump on camera here, raw, unedited reaction, because this young chess player is truly insane. Are we witnessing the rise of the next Carlsen? Now what's his name? Well it's Roman Sav Shogstyev, no doubt I'm saying it badly. He's a young Russian player. Here's a fantastic photo of him with Magnus Carlsen meeting one of his heroes at the World Rapid and Blitz Championship that took place recently over December 2023. And what he did there was insane. He beat five grandmasters, drew with more as well. He beat IMs. I mean, it was just truly incredible. The guy's eight years old. But what's most impressed me is what he does here in this game, the level of play. Now his opponent is Pranav V, who many of you will know as a blitz beast. This is a blitz game. I mean, this guy regularly features top 10, 15 players on Title Tuesday and other modern day blitz events. Seriously strong, 17 year old Indian Grandmaster. Now he opens with Knight F3 here, prepare for something special. So D5 played, G3, Knight F6 will keep these moves moving because it's a long game. There's a good sentence, moves moving. Now we get C6, castles, G6. So white going for this King's Indian attack. The knight develops here, castles and e4. You strike at the center. Now we get captures, pawn recaptures and queen c7. Prepares e5, fighting for central space. Queen e2, e5, knight c4, pressures this pawn. And now there's different ways to defend it, but bishop g4 selected. Giving the bishop pair, which Pranav now picks up. But in compensation for ditching that strong bishop pair, you get free and easy development, as we'll see. So the rook's now connected for black. Very nice. Rook d1 hits the open file. Knight c5. This one on a wonderful circuit. b3 now played. Not forced. You know, a4 also a desirable move, securing b5 and the outpost to an extent. We get knight e6, swinging into d4. So c3 covers, rook fd8, challenges the file, and bishop e3, very natural development, but it does allow black this b5 shot. You know, where's that knight now going? It'd have to stumble back to b2. It can then reroute to d3 and so on, but that was a nice space gainer, but missed. Bishop f8 played, nice positional idea. That was a bad bishop staring at a central pawn. So it looks at this square. We get b4, now giving this knight a few more options. You know, b5, you could now get knight a5. h5 from black, and we get h4 in response. Not forced, you could have gone a4, carried on. You know, if this one, not such a big deal. You can capture, run your own pawn. But okay, this was played. King h7, rook takes on d8 now. Knight recaptures to keep the rook here with the pawn. The bishop can actually take that, you know, never getting trapped with b6. The knight and bishop support this square. We now see bishop g5 taking advantage of this weakened outpost. And king g7 defends the attacked knight. Rook d1. And what I want to start highlighting is Roman's clock. Watch how it starts ticking down, because like the second half of this game, he plays on next to no time. But they get two seconds increment, that's time back per move. So we get knight e6, hitting that bishop, it drops back to e3, wasn't forced, you know, a bit of time was arguably wasted there, you could have taken, okay, here we see Pranav playing on the clock. King h7, king g2, now bishop h6, very nice positional idea, solid stuff from the eight-year-old player. You trade off your bad bishop, get rid of white's bishop pair, and now a4, nice space gaining play. We get king g7, queen e3, pawn b6, bishop e2 back. Rook d8, natural stuff from both players, but Roman burning through his time. Rook a1, why not trade the pieces? Well, it's classic, I'm the stronger player play. You keep pieces on the board, keep tension, make your opponent show, them why they're, uh, show you why they're lower rated. 
So king h7 back. Now we get rook f1. Pranav goes for a new plan here. King g7 and f4. This is horrible to be facing with five seconds on the clock. This is move 30. Where does it go to? It goes to move 81. We've got 51 moves left and he's got five seconds. This is truly astonishing. Wait till you see this. So captures played. Pawn recaptures, queen e7. Now this is a big blunder, big mistake played, but Pranav doesn't punish it. This is the only moment though. So what should you play here? Well, the very natural f5 is killing it. Of course, you wanna move your knight, you know, say you come back to f8, but then there's e5, the steamroller coming through the center. Move your knight somewhere, but then f6 check, queen is dropping, it's horrendous. And if you never moved your knight, coming back here, you know, if you tried to capture, same problems. Knight moves, well now you're dropping a queen whole thing's over. So that was simply the way to go. F5 followed by E5. But knight E5 was played, it throws the advantage because you threaten to take on C6, fought these two pieces, but once the rook covers, now when you go F5, knight F8, there's no E5. This stupid knight blocking the way. No, you've messed it up. So queen f4 played instead, you know, eyeing sensitive points down this f file. And now this is just such a classy move. Rook e8, ditching the c6 pawn, which is taken, there's nothing better, but now the center is caving in. You force the queens off, knight recaptures, black is better here. You could have taken with the rook there as well, but this is so tricky, of course. Pawn is hit, everything like that. So we get this one chucked in, Pawn recaptures and bishop c4. Great play by Pranav, going for that f7 weakness. So knight d6 back. What a defensive octopus. Hits the bishop, covers the square. Bishop d5. Rook e2 check. King g1. You know, you could have blocked with the rook, but again, Pranav wants to keep pieces on. We get rook d2, pressuring that centralized bishop. c4 covers, and now knight d7, reactivating the knight. It's great play. All of it on seconds. Knight d8 now, looking for knight e6 check. So the king sidesteps, recognizing the threat, and now you should go knight f7 check here. You trade a pair of knights, you invade with the rook, hit this, take the pawn. This is a great end game for white. You're gonna have a three on one over here. Even though black gets counterplay here and everything, white's pawns go really fast. Think a5 and a6 and this kind of thing, bishop supporting the square. But okay, knight e6 was played by Pranav. Now we get rook e2, hitting that knight. c5, best move for Pranav, but he misses it. He goes knight g5 here, and he's looking for mating ideas. Imagine this one moves, and you can wiggle in with the rook to here. But, okay, that's a long way off. Knight f5 first played, blocking the f-file, hitting this weakened pawn, then your knight would be loose. So knight f3 drops back covers this pawn, and now knight e3, here we see Roman just fighting right back into it. Both players now on five seconds, plus increment. So rook c1, that wonderful bishop drops, pawn recaptures, and knight f6 played. I'm not always pausing, by the way, for the absolute best moves. You know, this is human chess, blitz chess. You see the bar rising here, though. You know, I will mention this one. So d6, top way to play here. Not so easy to recapture that pawn, because if you come with the rook, then there's knight g5. If rook takes on d6, there's knight f7 check, if you can sort of keep up with that one. Dangerous pawn push. But okay, rook c7 played, missed. Gives up this for this, but now here is another exceptional moment. This just blew me away. So you're on seconds, what to do? The pawn is hanging, right? White wants to make a passer. So taking here, so natural. But look at this, knight g5, and you're getting mated. There is nothing you can do to prevent that. You can throw in some checks, you can give some pieces, whatever, doesn't matter, you're getting mated. So, that's why the pawn wasn't captured. But not only that, we didn't see, say, rook e7 or knight e7, panic move, time pressure, we saw rook e4. What an incredible move, because if white goes for the exact same theme, preparing to then checkmate, well you can take this pawn. Now if you try and shut the trap, the knight is loose, 
drops off the board. I really was impressed by this kind of like, not just responding, but counter-threatening. Wow. So B5 from Pranav. Again, this pawn not touched. So much composure. Knight C3 going for the A4 pawn. So A5 played. What do we see now? Well, again, the best move. Knight takes on B5, hits the rook. No time to take here and do all that stuff, or the rook comes just in time at the end of the line. So rook b7 played. You can't take, or you drop your knight. So we see knight d6, the pawn drops, but now this knight rotates into f5. Yes, white's got this passer, which is running, but again, so much composure, just knight takes on h4 giving white the time to push the a pawn, but then there's problems because the rook comes behind. So knight d2 played. Again, Pranav just wants those pieces on the board. Rook a4, knight b3 now. We see knight f3 check, king f2, the knight re-centralizes, knight c5, so low on time, both players. Rook attacked, moves, knight attacked, moves, knight c4, rook attacked, moved, and now this is incredible. Do we see the knight back to c4, hitting the rook again? No, we see check from Roman, like this guy is pushing for more. Eight years old, playing against a guy who's like 2600 classical, a chess prodigy in his own right, and he's pushing him on the board. Absolutely love to see it, and he gets a blunder. You know, running back a move there, what was stronger? Okay, king g3 a bit better, but black's just clearly better here with the connected passers, rook behind the enemy pawn. So knight c4 hits the rook, we get rook d8, and again, brilliant composure. How many of us are doing this? Oh dear, uh oh spaghetti oh, as Hikaru would say, you just got mated. This knight takes away the squares, is that Anastasia's mate maybe? But obviously, Roman sees it. He's an all-seeing octopus at eight years old. He goes king h7. Now we get rook d7 check, king h6, a7, and he starts running his own pawns. You know, most people his age are at home watching SpongeBob. He's at the chessboard destroying grandmasters. What is going on? We get knight d4, knight e5, hits this rook, check. Now king g7, knight b5, supports the a-pawn, and now black has to run that h-pawn. That is the way to go, but a fatal mistake made here of knight f7. Fatal if white finds the move. And if you want to test your skills here, see if you can find the winning idea, because there is one for white which Pranav misses. So the way that he should go here is with rook d3 and it's a simple idea you want to come here and intercept and black just can't do anything if you keep running the pawn like we see in the game well then this one comes what to do you're not in time and this one's like this and then you just get over this one's going through so rook d3 come in here with the knight a killer but rook b6 played, looking for this. Now h4, rook b8, h3, knight d4. Sorry, let me backtrack. Why knight d4? Well now, if you make the baby girl, black simply gives the rook and the pawn's running through. The king stands here, of course, so you can't get back. You know, I haven't checked the lines, but if the king stands here, then probably you're fine and winning, and you can't come in this direction either. Just incredible stuff from the youngster. So, the queen wasn't made. We see the knight come round, but now the pawn drops. Black is two pawns to the good. And watch this for technique. We get check, king g6, knight g3, and here black starts corralling the king, bringing the rook over, bringing the knight in, Sure, you can check me, no worries. Here come the pieces. Knight g3, you know, keeping an eye on the pawn going through. We get check. The king comes this way. Rook g2, hitting the knight, you know, not rushing this. So rook b3 defends. h2, you're threatening to take the knight, make a queen. So knight h1, rook g1 check, and we see resigns. Because you're about to win an entire piece, then you're two pawns and a piece down. Wow. This is truly incredible because some of his other wins, you know, it was where the Grandmaster made a tactical error, still fair play to him. But this, 81 moves, grinding against one of the world's strongest Blitz player players with five seconds on the clock from move 30, this is move 81, this is just sensational. I've never seen anything like this from an eight-year-old. Wow. Let me know your thoughts down below. And if you want to see another incredible game of chess, check out the video on screen. 
Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.